So I started another project, but this time I had a good reason. If you've seen other videos on our channel, then you probably know that we use our own networking solution built on top of Steam. But I've heard a lot of good stuff about Unity's new networking solution. So I decided to compare my solution with Unity's networking solution by making a completely playable game in a few days. My first thoughts were to make a fast paced first person shooter like Black Ops 3. I also needed to keep it simple because the purpose of this project was to test out netcode. So I decided to reuse this robot character from my previous project. The first day I created a new project and started by quickly coding a player movement script. I used the character controller instead of a rigid body because I don't need any complicated annoying collisions. Then I created a gun firing script, added a trail effect and added a hit effect. And this doesn't look great. To improve this, I added recoil. I did this by creating a script that uses the animation curve and changes the gun's rotation and position. And this should work. That's better. Next, I added this crosshair. And then I added every player's most hated mechanic, Bloom. It works similar to most other games. Player movement and gunfire increases the Bloom, so the player needs to stand still and tap fire to be accurate. Then it was time to add the satisfying hit marker that appears when you hit an enemy player. So I coded the hit marker to appear and fade away, and I coded it to appear yellow when the player hits a headshot. I also added a health bar with an animation that plays when the health is decreased, and the health bar fades away over time. So now we need to add feedback for when the player is killed. And there's many ways to show this, but most commonly it's shown with an animation, a ragdoll, or an explosion. Since he is a robot, I decided to make him blow up. I did this by splitting his body into separate objects, added a script that applies random force, and lastly created an explosion effect. At this stage, the movement is pretty sluggish, and I did say fast pace, so I added my favorite movement mechanics, wall running and double jump. Implementing double jump was just a matter of adding a few lines of code, and wall running was also fairly easy to add. I just used a raycast to detect any nearby walls, and then checked that that input matched the required direction. Then I added ADSing, which isn't actually aiming down sights, but it still improves accuracy and decreases the player's movement speed. By this time, I was sick of the basic character design and texture, so I spent the day just upgrading the visuals, and I came up with a completely unique design. So I started by remodeling his arm cannon on his right arm, and then I removed his left arm cannon and gave him a hand. Then I hand painted a texture for him and gave him a few new animations. I then got him into the game and implemented his new animations for ADSing, and then I finally added reloading with this new animation. Networking time. So I added like 10 lines of code, added a few networking components, and now we have the player's movement networked. I synced the X rotation with a script instead of using blend trees because just like the recoil script, I always find it faster to code it than to animate it. Next I had to network and add a bunch of small features. I started by adding a local health bar for the player and showing blood splatter on the screen when the local player is hit and also when the player's health is low. And because there's no heals in the game, I made the health start regenerating when the player has not been hit for a few seconds. I then added a died screen and networked respawning the player in a random location. And finally, I added this very nice little hovering effect. I networked all the enemy players to appear red, which also meant that I needed to change the enemy cannon fire effects to match. Making game worlds isn't really my forte. I always spend an abnormal amount of time struggling to make a game map look passable. So I decided to keep it simple. My first thoughts were to make it similar to a parkour map with a significant amount of walls for wall riding. So I started by modeling a wall and texturing it similar to a concrete wall. Then I modeled some paths on the floor, which I textured by unwrapping the UVs to fit correctly with this texture. Then I imported the model into Unity and used the terrain tool to surround the arena with mountains. I then added some grass and painted some textures. And I'm pretty happy with the end result. I always leave all the sound effects to the end because I hate adding sounds to my game. I love free sound, but it's also a nightmare. 
Anyway, I got through the nightmare by trying not to find the perfect sound, but combining multiple sounds together. For example, this gun blaster sound is actually four different sounds edited together. I spent another day just tweaking and adding small features. I decreased the map size and altered the size of some of the walls. I created this jump effect and networked it to play for the non-local players. I increased the movement speed, jumping force and gravity and I altered the wall running speed to be 50% faster than normal movement. I painted some more textures on the map and I altered the colours. I modelled some background hills for further in the distance and finally I added Unity Relay so I could start a game and other players could join without needing to open any ports. Then that night I tested the game with my friends and to my surprise we were able to play the game without any major bugs and the game felt smooth and pretty fun to play. This project was only meant to be for testing net code but I'm tempted to complete the game. Let me know in the comments. So am I going to switch to netcode? Well, to cut a long story short, yes. I built my networking solution very similar to how UNet was made because that was the main networking solution I had used in the past. So netcode's components are very similar to my own. And I'll still be able to use a few of my networking components like client prediction with netcode. Networking a game securely is already stressful enough. So not having to worry about the code behind it will be a tremendous relief and it will save a significant amount of time. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe.